Father, we thank you for this time again here tonight. Again, we just celebrated Christmas yesterday. We thank you for what Christmas has been set aside for with the birth of Jesus. And Father, we just pray that you bless this service tonight. Just be with your servant. Just be with each and everyone here. Continue to pray with, be with those that are on our prayer list. And just uh, be with Lana and just others that Omer, they need your healing touch. Continue to be with Ruth and all the others. And Father, we just uh, pray that as we start a new series tonight, that uh, it might be honoring and pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tonight we're going to look at a new series on another, another cult. We're going to, the title is uh, False Doctrines of the Church of Scientology. You know, I was asked before if Christian science and Scientology were the same, and I said the answer is no. And we're going to look at them, I don't know, probably a few weeks or so, I don't know how long. But we're going to, like I said, I wanted, I, at first I wasn't going to go over them because they're just so bizarre, but... I think it's kind of important because, again, they claim, I mean, they're the Church of Scientology. So, the Church of Scientology, or Scientology as it is usually known as, is a cult and false Christianity. Scientology was founded in 1953 in Cam Cam Camden, New Jersey by L. Ron Hubbard, who had written some science fiction. That ought to tell you something right there, starting off, you know, he was a science fiction writer. Today, the headquarters is in Riverside County near San Joaquinto, California, at a complex known as the Gold Base. Again, that ought to kind of give you a clue right there. The name of their headquarters is Gold Base. Now, L. Ron Hubbard had served in the U.S. Navy in World War II, and while in a naval hospital at the end of the war with supposed stomach illness, he claims to have made scientific breakthroughs by the use of endocrine experiments. This would lead him to write the article, Dianetics, the Evolution of a Science, for the astounding science fiction magazine in 1950. Later in 1950, he published the book, Dianetics, the modern science of mental health. You know, this is this is a key here. This this is this book he published, Dianetics, the modern science of mental health, and it's all about Dianetics, which is something made up by L. Ron Hubbard and consists of his own experiences, basic principles of Eastern philosophy, and the work done by Sigmund Freud who was the founder of psychoanalysis. I mean, some of these things right here, I'll tell you. I mean, Eastern philosophy, if anybody knows anything about Eastern philosophy, it totally contradicts Christianity. You know, that's your Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, all the other isms and stuff. <laughs> but, the uh, you know, it is definitely not stuff from God. You know, that's satanic stuff. Now, this book is considered the Bible for Scientologists and is said to be one of the great historical moments in history in comparison to man, quote, discovering fire and greater than man inventing the wheel and the arch. So, this is basically, that's their Bible. This book here. Dianetics. Yeah, di it, well, the full title is Dianetics, the Modern Science of Mental Health. But, you know, the just called Dianetics or whatever, but this this is what they consider their Bible, and, and you know, they think it's one of the three greatest things that ever happened, you know, the, the discovering of fire and uh, the inventing of the wheel and the arch, you know, it's even greater than the inventing of the wheel and the arch, so really it's just blow fire, maybe, you know. But uh, Scientologists often date time from the date the book was published in 1950, with 1950 as year one. For example, you know, we're in the year 2021 would be 71 AD with AD standing for after Dianetics and not for the Latin Anno Domino, which means in the year of our Lord. So again, you see already right off the bat how 
they're they're totally just distort, distorting, you know, pushing God out of the picture of Jesus Christ and everything, and then you know they don't even date their their years from Christianity or the birth of Jesus, but you know it's off of this book and so forth. This shows what is more important to Scientologists as they replace Jesus as their Lord. Now, the newest version of this book displays a volcano on the cover and is supposed to represent the death of the aliens near the volcano. Now, I'll get into the aliens later on, but just take what, I, what I'm saying with a grain of salt here. But notice that Dianetics includes some Eastern philosophy, as I, which I said, never agrees with Scripture. Now, L. Ron Hubbard's business of this false Dianetics went bankrupt in 1952, and he reorganized it as a religion and renamed it the Church of Scientology in 1953. You know, and again, we've seen that in other cults too, that, you know, not so much that I've gone over, but. There are a lot of other cults out there that, you know, our, our government is so naive and stupid that they allow, you could say, I worship a rock, and that becomes a religion. And so they, you know, basically he took a bankrupt company, didn't pay his bills, and then reorganized as now it is a religion. So, you know, basically he can get away with stuff, and then he's got tax exemption and all this other stuff, and, you know, he just played the system, basically. And, you know, he played on people's uh, gullibility and, and so forth. You know, because, I mean, most people, you know, a lot of people play, say, say they're atheists, but most people want some kind of religion. I mean, even your atheists, most of them, they worship a sports team or they worship something else. I mean, people have something that they worship. You know, they're, they're, there's a, you know, everybody wants to be, quote, religious. But today there are about 32,000 Scientologists around the world with about 25,000 of those here in the United States of America. Now many governments speak of the Church of Scientology as a manipulative, profit-making business and a dangerous cult. And they are correct on both counts. You know, there are some governments that are smarter than our governments and recognize the evilness of Scientology, but not our government. But the Church of Scientology gets very defensive with anyone who criticizes the cult and will sue everyone who offends them. I mean, they will sue everyone. The church tries to control all media articles written about it, especially any critical of it. They are often suing people and organizations in order to get money and destroy their enemies. Scripture says we are to take matters before the saints and not the courts. Yet Scientology constantly goes before the courts to solve issues. If you would, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. And like I said, as we do with all the cults, we all, we're going to have this introduction here, get over, give you some of the basic stuff before we actually get into their false doctrines. But you, know, you need to have an understanding of the background of Scientology to kind of understand some of their bizarre beliefs. But 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? You know, if they're, if they're true Christians, they should be going before God, you know, and other Christians to, to judge them, not before the unjust. In other words, the unsaved world. You know, we, we should be taking our matters. If, we got, if I have an issue with one of you or you have an issue with me, we should be taking it before other Christians, not before the unsaved judges and lawyers and all the other crooks out there. Now, if the Church of Scientology, uh, uh, basically what I just said here, but it is true Christianity would not take matters before whom they see as unsaved people. Jesus said we are to turn our cheek to those who attack us, not sue them. You know, we're supposed to love our enemies, not turn around and just because you attack me. You know, obviously, I don't want people criticizing this church or, or you know, the Baptists and stuff in general if it's unjustified. Now, if it's justified, then, you know, that's one thing. But at the same time, that doesn't mean we turn around and sue them. You know, people have freedom in this nation or for the whole world, for that matter, that they can blast Christianity all they want or Baptists, you know, Baptists or, or, or me or anything else. They can say whatever they want about me. You know, they have that, we have that freedom in this world. You know, we don't turn around and sue them just because, 
know, you know, if they're saying false things, that's you know a little different. But even then, we still we just you know we're to love our enemies, not go after them. But the Church of Scientology certainly does not obey this command from Jesus. As I said, they sue everybody, go after anybody and everybody. But let's look at Matthew chapter five, verse thirty-nine, to see what Jesus has, you know, said about this. So Matthew chapter five, verse thirty-nine. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 39. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. You know, so obviously, I'm, I mean, I'm not saying sometimes some of that stuff's easy. It's just like you said, they take your cloak, then you give them the other one, you know, and so forth. You know, if you have two coats and so forth, that, you know, tells you to walk a mile, you walk two miles, you know. But, you know, just sit there and just sue over, I mean, I'll get into a few of the things that they, they've done, but they're, they're just, they are, they're, they're wicked evil people, is what they are. But the Church of Scientology has been involved in many illegal activities over the years and has had many convictions against it, including its leader, L. Ron Hubbard, who was convicted of much illegal activity. The Church even steals from its own members. Hubbard once told his ex-wife he had murdered their daughter and then later called back and said he had not. That's not something to joke about, especially by someone who is supposedly the leader of God's true church. The church was investigated for illegal trafficking of people. You know, the church just has a long history of being investigated, not only by our government, but our governments and so forth, and some bits been proven and so forth. And... You know, this isn't just one of those things that the, the church is trying to go after religious church. You know, like sometimes the government won't go after the church just because they don't like Christianity. <laughs> These things that they're doing, they need to be investigated because, I mean, they were going out, you know, trafficking people. They've done, a, I mean, they've just done a lot of bad things and stuff. You know, they're certainly not Christian activity. But now the Church of Scientology teaches that the alien Xenu who was the leader of the Galactic Confederacy, Confederacy, brought billions of aliens to Earth in DC-8-like vehicles about 75 million years ago, stacked them around volcanoes, and then killed them with hydrogen bombs. So I hope you guys understood that, and now you know what's going on. Now, the... Thetans, you know, that's why I remember I said it was around this volcano. Now you understand what he was, the picture is explaining. But the Thetans, or the immortal spirits from these aliens, claims to people, and the people must be cleansed by auditing, which is how Scientologists are, quote, saved. You know, and, 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 and think of some of the stuff we're studying in this cult, it is so bizarre. I was having a hard time trying to even understand some of this stuff, so you know, I'm just going to try to do the best I can. But I mean, what is some, the uh, we're going to get into that. I'll get into that later on. I don't want to jump too far ahead right okay. now. But just mark it down as auditing, and I'll explain you know what that is. But this belief is normally only told to the highest levels, and is said to be part of the church's secret. Advanced technology. You know, and again, all these cults always do. They only keep, you know, whether it's Freemasonry or any of these things, they always keep everything to the top levels. You know, we as Baptists or true Christians, right? I mean, you don't even have to be, you know, be a non denominated non church or whatever. You're a true Christian church. You don't keep things. I mean, the newest Christian that walks in or person that walks in off the, the, the church, off the street, you lead them to Jesus Christ. We don't go around keeping secrets from them. I mean, obviously, there are certain things that you're not going to write off the bat just because they want to understand it until they learn some things. But it's not, you know, we don't keep, you know, only certain secrets that will until you've been saved for X amount of time, you've gotten to this part, you know, you made it to a deacon, now you're a pastor or whatever. Then now you know where you can learn the, 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 the high secrets. No, that's not, that's, you know, but all these cults, they always do it. So the, they call it advanced technology. But the church tries to hide this belief from the public and has sued over. So this thing I just told you about the aliens, they try to hide that from the public and they sue over it and everything else. 
You know, they don't want people to know. Again, if you truly believe this, anything that, that I believe from Scripture, I, want you I have no problem putting it right here, uh, broadcast, broadcasting it publicly to the whole world, to anybody that wants to listen to it. Because I believe what I'm preaching. So I'm not ashamed of it. So I don't try to hide it or keep it from other people from hearing it. But yet, they don't want people knowing about their alien belief because they know it's just so totally ridiculous and stupid. I'm sorry, but it is. But, uh, you know, like I said, they'll sue anybody and everybody over it. Now, it is true, you know, as I said, if it's true, why hide it or be ashamed? You know, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I preach about a lot of controversial things that people mock me over. You know, you've already, you guys have already heard a lot of the things. And there's other things. And people ridicule me, minimum, you know, mock me, whatever. I don't care. I'm going to preach the truth. And I, I'm not ashamed of what I preach on because, like I said, I'll tell it anybody because I know it's the truth. But I, I don't hide my beliefs because I know they're scriptural and I believe in them. Now, Scientologists should be the same if they truly believe their doctrines. You know, that should go for any cult or anybody. If you truly believe what you claim you do, then you shouldn't be uh, trying to hide it from anybody. In fact, you should be wanting everybody else to know it so they would want to be start thinking like you. But now Jesus condemned false science and those who profess to be wise. Scientology clearly believes in the false old earth of billions of years instead of the scriptural just under 6,000 years as well as other bizarre unscriptural beliefs and even half science is part of their name. You know, I'm going to read this verse again. I read it with the Christian Science, but let's turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 20 through 21. This is the only time science is ever mentioned in Scripture. And again, now there is some true science. Science, it's not that science is wrong. You know, science, if it's true science, then it's God ordained. It's just that a lot of man has taken science and manipulated it, and now they teach a lot of false science. So 1 Timothy. Chapter 6, verses 20 through 21. But, <clears throat> well, like I said, before I read this, then Scientology, you know, has even science in its name. You know, the, the Church of uh, Scientology, and then, you know, Christian Science had the name in, in theirs as well. So they have science in it. You know, they claim to be science, and they also claim to be Christians. So this, this applies very much to them. But 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 20 through 21. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. And that's exactly what these people are. They've Air concerning the faith, you know, and they have science falsely so called. Nothing of what they're saying is true, and they're definitely not Christian. I mean, again, it's just like when we saw the Christian scientists that they're total oxymorons because neither one of them, they're not Christian and they're not scientists. So, you know, they don't have true science or any of that stuff. But look, uh, another verse that relates to this and explains, you know, exactly who. God is talking about right now is what we're going to see in Romans chapter 1 verse 22. This verse applies very much to Scientologists as well as others. So Romans chapter 1 verse 22. In okay, Romans chapter 1 verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And I know there's some particular individual that likes to talk on TV all the time that if this explains very much so. Let's just say there's more than one individual. But, you know, they, they say themselves to be they're wise, but God says they're fools. And that's exactly what they are here. Their, their beliefs are just, you know, I mean, it, you know, some of the stuff, I, like I said, I read, it's just so bizarre. But, uh, God says he is the creator of the universe and man, not aliens. You know, so God, clearly, if you guys turn to Genesis chapter 1, look at the first verse and then we'll go to verse 27. But God says that he's the creator of the universe. I mean, you know, they're claiming that these aliens, you know, they're, 
everybody's really just got these thetans or whatever, they're just the leftover spiritual remnants of these uh, aliens that got blown up. So Genesis chapter 1.1, 1, 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And then go down to verse 27 of Genesis chapter 1. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now there are no such things as aliens and there is no alien life on any other planet. So called aliens are nothing more than devils. You know I've had, I mean just recently I had a conversation with a professor Christian and they'll try to argue with me that there are aliens. Or how do we know there's not aliens or whatever? Because scripture you know, tells us. Scripture would have mentioned them. You know, the curse was placed, you know, when Adam sinned, all of creation was cursed. If there was aliens, then they got cursed by nothing they did and are going to hell because God, Jesus didn't come to die as an alien. He would have to die as, as whatever, Martian, whatever, on every single planet as these individuals. You know, so they're dying and going to hell for nothing they even did. It was something that they didn't even know this guy, Adam, that caused it all. So... You know, there, I mean, it's just many different reasons I've explained before, but there are no aliens out there. That the so-called aliens, that, you know, like we've heard me talk about UFOs and so forth, those are devils. They're not little green Martians or anything else. And they didn't live on Venus, as we saw with um, what was it, Christian Science there, or whatever. Then the, the guy had been to Venus before or something. But the Church of Scientology is a church for the wealthy and is known as the religion of many Hollywood stars, including Tom Cruise, who is at the higher levels of Scientology. You know, and I could give you a whole bunch of um, movie stars that are involved in this, that um, are very much, you know, this is the religion of them. And it explains everything that goes on in Hollywood. Now, everything in Scientology costs the individual money, including to supposedly obtain their salvation from, quote, this auditing. Like I said, I'll get into later on. But the founder, L. Ron Hubbard, once told the Los Angeles Times, quote, make money, make more money, make others produce so as to make money. That's his quote. You know, obviously he got, you know, started this religion to get rich. You know, I mean, it, it, it should be obvious. You know, and you shouldn't have to pay. When you have to pay for, quote, your salvation, that ought to be a clue that you're in a cult. You know, you, you can come here to this church anytime you want. I will freely give you the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it will never cost you anything other than your time to listen to me. You know, that when you have to pay for salvation, the gift of salvation is free that Jesus died for, for everyone, that it's free for anyone who wants to take that free gift that Jesus offered to us. Now, L. Ron Hubbard also once said, according to Reader's Digest, quote, writing for a penny, a word is ridiculous. If a man really wants to make a million dollars, the best way would be to start his own religion. Now remember, he was a science fiction writer, making a penny a word. Thought that was ridiculous. Like he said, I didn't make a million, start a religion. And that's exactly what he did. Scientology made Hubbard a multi-millionaire. Now many cult leaders start a new cult often so they can become rich and powerful. Now you see that all the time. Now God says money is the root of all evil. If you would turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. And while you're turning there, you know, we'll get into it when we talk about the Bible versions, but you know, a lot of Bible versions, they change this part, you know, here. It, 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 where we're gonna see where it says money is the root of all evil, but they'll change it to all kinds of evil or something else like that. You know, money is the root of all evil, not just certain types of thing. I mean, and if you and if you think about it, really, if you look at any kind of sin or anything out there, any kind of power, everything ultimately goes back to money. Look at the people that are running the world right now. It's all because of money. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. 
which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You know, you, if you seek out to search the love of money, it's going to ultimately just bring you destruction and will set you on a path straight to hell. You know, Jesus himself even said, for those who put their trust in riches, you know, he said it was easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a man to trust in his riches. You know, and again, don't always take that out. A lot of your modern Bibles will take out that last part, trust in riches, because that's exactly what they do. Roman Catholic Church and all these other ones, they trust in their riches. So, you know, they take that out. And it's not that a rich man can't go to heaven, but it's very, very hard because most of them trust in their riches rather than in Jesus Christ for their salvation. So the church of Scientology puts money ahead of soul winning and truth. You know, again, I mean, how am I supposed to win souls? You know, not too many people are going to come listen to me if they have to pay for salvation. And you'll see there's levels of, quote, they have to work their way up. So it's not like you just pay one fee one time. No, that's just, that's just for the first level. Then you got to pay so much for the next level and so forth. So, you know, constantly it's costing you money. So obviously they don't really care about too many people getting saved. But the Church of Scientology greatly controls its members and will punish and threaten those who try to leave the cult. Members are pressured to talk about their intimate relations. And I think you guys understand what I'm referring to there. You know, that your personal relationships that happen in the bedroom that stay there. This again shows the connection to Freemasonry and Satanism as they are all about intimacy. You know, that's what those two are all about. Everything in them has to do with sex, you know, all their symbols and all these different things. And, um, you know, Church of Scientology is the same way. Scientology is known to have had a prison camp where disobedient members were sent there for reindoctrination and performed hard labor on meager meals. You know, just like during World War II and so forth, there was uh, prison concentration camps. They do this to their own people. They'll send them off there to these secret camps, and they would do these free indoctrinations for them and keep, you know, feed them basically on, you know, like bread and water type thing, and then, you know, brainwash them with all their, you know, try to re-educate them with, you know, back into Scientology versus, you know, they, they, they were trying to get out of it or something, and they try to, you know. So again, does that sound like something that Christianity, I never saw that scripture where Jesus told that's what we're supposed to do, that if someone tries to get out of the Baptist church or does whatever, they were supposed to do this kind of stuff. But the church has been known to wiretap the phones of members to spy on them. Tom Cruise did this on his wife, Nicole Kidman, with full authority of the Church of Scientology. I mean, that's, they're the ones that actually did it for him. I mean, he is the one that had you know, higher up people, and the church did it for him. Did this to his, one of his wives, Nicole Kidman, and it's one of the things which led to the divorce between the two of them. And the thing is, Nicole Kidman, she was a, a Scientologist herself. You know, and then she finally got, I mean, Nicole Kidman is the one that got Tom Cruise into Scientology herself because she had been born into it. Her parents had been Scientologists. She got born in, grew up in the cult, and brought Tom Cruise into it when they worked together on a movie. And then she finally, I think, was starting to wise up a little bit, and... You know, it's kind of trying to work her way out of Scientology. Well, Tom Cruise got into it and got into it gung-ho, and he still is. And, you know, basically, you know, like I said, even though she was a Scientologist herself and one that brought him into it, he was still basically going after her. I mean, it just shows you there's no, uh, there's no signs of Christianity there at all. But as all cults, it is a works-based salvation and controlled by a leader who determines the doctrines and fate of their members. The Church of Scientology, as all cults, claims it alone can only bring salvation. Now, the leader of the Church of Scientology today is David Miscavige, who served under Hubbard and took over after his death. He is known as the chairman of the Religious Technology Center. Under him is known is what is known as the C organization, which is usually referred to as C org. You know, it's just abbreviated and just usually just simply called C org. 
This is made up of the most dedicated Scientologist with David as the captain. Now notice he is referred to as captain and is supposedly the one who can determine if a Scientologist is saved or not. Jesus said he is the captain of people's salvation. If you would, turn to Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10. So basically he's trying to take the place of Jesus here, take one of his titles and so forth. And one of the things of what you know Jesus did. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10. For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. The name of the headquarters, Gold Base, shows the church's obsession with money. The church runs a training center in Clearwater, Florida, which costs many millions of dollars. I think at one time, I, I don't remember, it was at least like $25 million or more. I mean, it was, I think, even higher than that, but it was lots and lots of money. This building is known as the Flag Building or the Super Power Building, where Scientologists are taught to master their supposed 57 senses. Remember, we have five senses, but Scientologists learn how to have, they have 57 senses. Now, Hubbard taught that people have 57 senses rather than the five that we have. You know, the touch, taste, smell, sight, and hear. And at this building here, remember, one of the names was Super Power Building. I mean, again, that's like your uh, comic book type thing, your superhero power. I mean, it just some of the names even just... But many of the symbols of the church are similar to the satanic Freemasonry with many pyramids and other symbols being used. The main logo consists of two triangles with one on top of the other and an S going through them. So basically it's a triangle with another triangle on top of it with an S going through it, you know, between the, you know, the two triangles. The church's symbols are all connected to the satanic New Age movement. The church tries to control all use of images they use by suing and other means. If they are true Christians, they should use the same symbols as other Christians. Now that, but you know, we don't take, you know, if someone uses the cross, we don't go and sue them. I mean, even if a Muslim uses the cross. You know, we don't, you know, a true Christian, we don't go around suing somebody because they're using, quote, our symbols, you know. I mean, number one, nobody owns anything. You know, God owns everything. So, but, um, I mean, you know, if you want to get technical, even true Christians don't go around suing the cults for using the cross in the wrong way, you know. Oh, you got it upside down. That's it. Yeah, well, the Satanists use that. Yeah, they take the cross and turn it upside down and so forth. So, you know, again, if they are true Christians, they should use the same symbols as Christians. Scientology does not use a normal Christian cross, but rather the Scientology cross, which consists of eight points, supposedly of the, quote, eight dynamics, or eight measures that each person is said to have. You know, again, it's just they come up with all these bizarre things. But, you know, that they have their own cross. And it represents, you know, these you know, the eight points. The spaulding represents these eight dynamics that each person supposedly has. Now, this cross bears some resemblance and is rumored to be based off of the Rose Cross of Aleister Crowley. <coughs> and I guarantee you, it is based off of that. You know, that, that uh, I mean, just know their beliefs. But we'll get into it. I don't know if I get into it or not, but... Um, in case you guys don't know who Aleister Crowley was, he's dead now and burning in hell. But Aleister Crowley was a Satanist, and he, um, you know, like I said, he started, uh, he was just a big Satanist. Let's put it that way. All, a lot of your rock and roll stars, you know, the Beatles. Aleister Crowley, Steve Crowley is on the cover of one of their Beatle albums. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but. Uh, 
There's a big picture of like all these people all gathered together on one of his one of their one of their albums. And uh, in the back in the little section, Aleister Crowley is in that in that picture. And uh, they were Satanists themselves. The Beatles were all Satanists, and Aleister Crowley was their big fan. And they, um, like I said, it's just why would you have if you're so called Christians have something that even comes close to looking something similar to be mistaken of something that's a known Satanist? But the Church of Scientology is opposed to both psychology and psychiatry. Now, this I actually agree with them on. You know, Christians need to seek help from God through scripture, not some quack doctor. I mean, really, that's what psychology and psychiatrists are. For the most part, they're just a bunch of wacko quack nuts. And Christians really should have no business going to see them, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, they need to turn to Jesus Christ and not be going to them and tell them, you know, these people are all unsaved people to begin with. So why are you going to go tell them all these, your problems when you need to be taking it to Jesus? But now, a Sunday service at a Scientology church consists of reading L. Ron Hubbard's writings and not scripture, as well as other Scientology doctrine. So again, it shows you they're not true Christians. They're not sitting here reading a King James Bible. They're going through and studying that book, that Dianetics book, whatever I said it was called, and um, they, uh, you know, some other writings of L. Ron Hubbard's and stuff. You know, they should be reading the writings of the Lord Jesus Christ, not L. Ron Hubbard. And then, you know, I notice again, all these cults always do that. You know, it doesn't matter who it is, they always that the writings of whoever the founder was or something like that. You know, they always do that. You know, Mormonism, Church of Scientology. You know, on and on. You know, Jehovah's Witnesses, so forth. But the Church of um, Scientology has its own holidays such as L. Ron Hubbard's birthday in March, the anniversary of the publication of Dianetics in May, Sea Org Day in August, and Auditor's Day in September, and International Association of Scientologists anniversary in October. Now, none of these have any scriptural basis or anything to do with Jesus. And they, they, but they also celebrate Christmas and Easter, just in case you're wondering. So, you know, that's why they're Christians, you know. But, uh, you know, and again, I mean, even in one sense, I've said that before, but Chris, Christmas and Easter are not technically, in one sense, found in Scripture. But the, at least the basis or the idea of why we celebrate them is found in Scripture, where their holidays have nothing to do. I mean, I've mentioned it before, but even like, you know, L. Ron Hubbard's birthday is in March, is one of their holidays. The only time birthdays are ever mentioned in scripture are actually in a negative way. You know, like I said, I'm not telling you we can't celebrate a birthday, but to put that as, you know, a Christian holiday or whatever, then yes, I have a problem with that. You know, that we need to remember sometimes birthdays really are all about ourselves and, and uh, it's our day to be selfish where other days are about other people. And, you know, honestly, throughout most of history, people celebrate a person's death, not the birthday. And in scripture, as I said, the only time birthdays were ever mentioned were in a negative way where the, um, uh, you know, remember Herod at one time, you know, and next thing you know, John Baptist loses his head over that. And, and you know, there was the one with uh, the Egyptian pharaoh, you know, his, his, his uh, you know, it's like, Basically, you know, nothing was ever good about birthdays, you know. So, you know, again, I'm not saying that we can't celebrate them, but it certainly should be found, you know, that shouldn't be a priority with this founders leader's birthday. But the Church of Scientology claims to be compatible with true Christianity. Yet I will show you that it, that is the farthest thing from the truth. One of the problems in finding their false doctrines is that they are very secretive as all cults about their true beliefs. Now, scripture is not to be kept hidden from anyone. Scientologists do not believe in the Holy Bible, nor do they use it. So how can they be Christians? This is only some of the more bizarre doctrinal beliefs of the Church of Scientology. I mean, we'll get into those starting next week. But, you know, again, they don't necessarily they don't believe in Jesus being you know, God and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I mentioned that in the sermon this morning. You know, you can't be a Christian if Jesus is not God. And, you know, you don't even use the Bible, you know, as your source. 
And as I said, just trying to even study some of this stuff, it's hard to even find some of their beliefs because it's so secretive that if it's true Christianity, why are you trying to hide it? Jesus was out there trying to proclaim it to the world, not trying to hide it. So why, why are they trying to hide it? So again, you know, some of their stuff I may be just a little bit off, but I mean, I'm basically, I'm sure, I think I got the gist of it. But I mean, we're, we're going to see over the next couple weeks or so, whatever it takes, that uh, the, their, their beliefs are just so bizarre that it, I don't even need to find anymore because uh, it, it just doesn't matter. But you, you'll understand it's not true Christian. But we're going to stop there, like I said, for, for um, this week. We'll pick it up again next week, starting to take a look at some of their false doctrines. And in answer to your question, that's one of the things you know we'll look at is auditing next week. So that's why I said I didn't really want to get too much into it now because it just it, confused. Well, yeah, it just throw me off the track and everything. So well, let's have a word of prayer and then we'll be dismissed. Father, again, we come to you tonight. And Lord, again, we do pray for any Scientologists that might be out there that one of us have to come across this or listen to it, that uh, instead of getting angry and wanting to sue or do anything, that they'll uh, open up a King James Bible, turn to Scripture, and see what Jesus really has to say, and, and worry about what he has to say and not what L. Ron Hubbard has to say. That, and realize that it's salvation only comes through the Lord Jesus Christ and not auditing or anything else that L. Ron Hubbard says. And Father, make them realize that salvation is a free gift and it's not something that they need to pay all kinds of thousands and thousands of dollars for to try to seek salvation. And Father, we do pray for safety for each and every one here today as they leave tonight. And that uh, pray for safety throughout the week and that they'll return for the midweek service. Just pray that they'll, you be with each and every one. Continue to be with those on our prayer list. We just ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.